now. It's on the overheads. But it was about 100 by 100. Pretty nice speaker. And they did this in the 1960s, and they planned their economy down to the penny. To the end. To the last yet. And they had fantastic growth. They grew at over 10% for 15 years using that system. But the Japanese, at first they had a long-term, they started off by saying, what do we want in our society 25 years down the road? What do we need in housing? What do we need in education? So they knew pretty much about the population 25 years down the road because they already had the people born. But what they want to know how they were going to take care of them. And then they did another long-term projection. They said, okay, how much GDP would we have to produce to support this? In terms of government spending and everything else. And then they said, well, okay, that's the 25-year goal. Now, what would we have to produce in the intermediate term, 15 years down the road, in order to achieve the 25-year goal? And they did that. And another model a little more elaborate. And then they had this input-output model that what do we have to do next year to be on track with the 15-year-old goals? 15-year goals. That was the input-output model. And it was much more detailed than what we So th these input-output tables are used for very short term to tell you what's going to happen you have to have next year in order to achieve the goal that you have on the long term. Uh, yeah. You're still on the Leontief from our model, is it? Yeah. Okay. This is based on the Leontief model. Now, the, <coughs> the reason why the, the uh, input output table is only done in the short term is because these coefficients don't stand up for them. They change due to technological change. They change. So, in order to make the whole system work good for a long time, you've got to constantly update those technological coefficients. The U.S. government, the Department of Commerce, does that. They, they update their input output table every year based upon some technical coefficients they have for about five years down the line. But about every five years, they redo all their technological coefficients from scratch. And then they adjust them each year. But the Antia had a better idea. The Antia said, let's update them every month. And he had this agreement with the, the Society of Mechanical Engineers where we get all the production data from all of the United States piped into NYU. On Mercer Street, NYU has a building there where they had the economic research performed by the Antia. And uh, one floor of that was all computers with all this data coming in from Society of Industrial Engineers, and they were computing the input output tables constantly. And that, would have, that was a terrific system. A terrific system. Unfortunately, he died uh, too, too young. There's a, there's a guy in Maryland by the top of Island who picked it up. But it's not the same as what they are doing. The woman who was actually doing the computer work for a woman by the name of Faye Ducci, who's now a dean of the uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic And she got tired of it. And I just can't spend the rest of my life doing this. I need a change. But unfortunately, all that work came from home. But if you're going to really do any kind of serious economic planning in your economy, that's what you need. That is the only production function that makes any sense. So that's why I wanted to introduce you. It's on the Neontius production function. Now, if you'd like, uh, Mamu, you, we can also email this. Do <laughs> right. yeah, it, sure. Do you want me to do it now or at the end of the class? I do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Come on. Do it now. Take your time. Take your time. Take all the 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 time. Final demand. I'm going to toss it.
Actually, should just be sticking. Okay, how did you how did you get final win? Final win? Yeah. Overall, final win. Professor, is that question? Can I ask a side question? Yes. But how do you get that? Can I ask a question? Final yeah. demand. With all of this, what is wrong with the command price. economy then? Isn't it? Yes. Well, what's I thought the command economy is not bad. Final if it works is, with is, is a market share, share of GDP, isn't it? Yeah. If you look at the total per share. The genius of Leontief, if he realizes that right. hey, if you share. have a command economy and, it's the, and all the decisions are made by bureaucrats, right. it's going to be inefficient. Oh, I have no idea. But if you have a market economy that's doing its normal thing, but you're capturing the data through computing, oh, is that then you can treat it like a command economy, except that you're getting really good data. Okay. And then it works. And that's what the Japanese did. Professor, how do you get final demand again? The final demand is specified. So it's okay. given. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is, this is what you're targeting, final demand. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Right. That makes more oh. sense. So now you want to know what do you have to produce in order to achieve that target? That makes sense. For example, Obama says, look, look, we have enough of the slow growth. Let's grow by 4% next year. Let's say he says, oh, we might have overall growth of GDP at 4%, but in agriculture, we only need 2%. In industry, we want about 6% and the services and the other 5%. And the same thing works out to 4% on the average. I might use the, the, the bigger and then, Type that all yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. We'll put that in there. Oh, oh, yeah. that, that's it. Type there. that all out. And run this. I'm going to use that right there. You got it? I guess. What do you uh, what if you, now that you understand the principle, we can go back and look at the U.S. Did you send that to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. I actually got it. You got it? Yeah, we talked to you. It's very weird. You need a message. Fantastic. Too many calls. Too many times.
This is the total intermediate demand. Now they do this for all these different industries. And then they get the total Now all these, in order to make this work for the economy, then they, then they forecast what they want for final demand, how much it's going to go to consumption. The government, local government, this is total government. This is uh, growth capital formation, this is total, total investment. Here we get the total exports. And this is their total final demand. Now what they do in the UK, the first they forecast what they would like to have in this. Then they go back to the industry demand, and they solve that system, and they find out what they have to produce over here to do that. But you can see, when you're doing this for a very large matrix like this, you've got to look at each and every one of these sectors. So you have to have an awful lot of economists working there who specialize in these sectors to know what could be done with these sectors. And when you do that exercise, the Japanese did it very diligently in the Japanese planning agency. When you do that, you do that diligently, you get very good results. You really get powerful results. All the universities, the and even those. Do you, do you, does every does every country have an input output table like this? Uh, almost all the developing countries. Uh, so we're, were we able to find them anywhere? Like yeah, this, they where? went to their statistical office. They, they did one for the UK, they did one for the United States, over here. Okay, because I'm trying to find the French one, I can't find it. The input output? Yeah. Well, you might have to translate it. I'll keep looking. I'm just... Is it, do you have the English version of French? Oh, no, I, I can't find anything that has anything to do with French, France, anything. Uh, but, I mean, I'll find it eventually. It just... Well, the, the French statistical office is called the, uh, the Institute Insee. But how do you get to that? French. I am S-E-E. It's the French statistical office. I forgot what it's there. Institute of Statistical Economic or something. Insee. There you go. Got it? Yep, found it. Now, in there, they will have an input output table. Ah, it's in French. Uh, <laughs> you found it? Most of it's in French. Le modèle input output. Ah, there's the matrix. People who work in this, who work in input output, are the smartest uh, economists. They know the most about the economy. They go into the economy in very detail. And the only way you're going to know anything about the economy is to get, get into the data. Otherwise, it's all blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. But how do you learn to make these tables? Sorry? How do you learn to make these tables? Where do you? But you have to go to some place that he's a good put out. There is one, the, the one economist that sort of put out the guy. His name is Daryl uh, McLeod. He's up the Rosehill. And he teaches it. Daryl McLeod. He's a big graduate. Graduate level? But if you, uh, probably the best place to learn to put out is the United States uh, University of Maryland. I haven't been keeping up with it lately. But it's also taught in Europe. Gamal uh, Elish taught it at the, actually he taught it at the American University at Cairo. He also taught it at the 
the regional headquarters for Africa. That's about the schools for African economy. People just went out with it. We're talking about how the money you went to tables. I'm just trying to find the damn table. What about LSC, London School of Economics? Oh, they would have. They would probably have that. They would have. I don't know. Well, I haven't checked it, but I'm sure they would have. How do you get the growth rates between the years? That's something that is done with a long term model. So you just put in like the 1.01, 1 1.02, 1.026? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just made that up? I made that up. Okay. Basically, when people who work with it went out and say, look, we have these long term goals over a period of 10 years. So we should be on track growing at, say, 2.5% a year or 3.5% a year. And then they break that down by second. And each of these seconds, how much you have to go to have that the total growth. Right? Okay. And they have that specialist will say, well, this sector is capable of doing this, and this yes, sector is capable of doing that. Yeah. The Japanese took one step further. They told the sector how to grow. They gave them targets. And they gave them help to be able to grow that way by making loans of it. That worked very well. Very close relationship between the Japanese Central Bank and the entire I think we're going to leave this subject and move on to the next subject that deals with it for now. I have no degrees of freedom of Ordered by the dean, I thought we could get out of here on the 14th. She said, absolutely not. You have to teach on the 21st. And then I said, well, what about the final? And so I sent out a great email. I said, look, how about I teach half the night on the 21st. We have the final on the other hand. She said, OK, I'll let you do it. So that was a special paper. But we should have had the final the following week. But it's already the holiday season. Really do that. That's impossible. Now, what I will do, I will grade you on all the points from your homework and the final. If you don't show up for the final, you'll still get a grade. But it won't be as high as what if you did show up for the final. Okay. Uh, unless you get a special permission from the dean to take a makeup. If you get special permission from the dean to take a makeup, which is called a deferred exam for after the holidays, and then you can take that after the holidays and then you can get it. I can give you an ABS grade, an absolute grade. But the only way I can give you that ABS grade is for you to go to the dean, the, the, the dean of uh, professional continuing, continuing studies. studies. That's the dean you have to go to. Sorry? Is it about Paul? Is that the Is that the what? Yeah, it's right down here in the hall. These were professional continuing studies. They run this class. This is their class. And they're the ones who tell me when to come and when to have the exam. So if they give you permission, you have to fill out a form, which goes to the registrar's office. And then when you come back sometime in January, you come in, you take the exam. It will be administered by the registrar's office. I have to put the exam in a sealed envelope with instructions on how to do the exam. And then you can take the exam. There will be a prox uh, proxy for me up there to give the exam. And then you can take it later. Otherwise, if you miss the exam and you don't do that, your grade will be based only on your homework. Homeworks are about 60% of your grade. And your final exam is 40%. Right now, I don't see anybody getting less than a C minus. That would be the, probably the lowest grade I would give out at this point. 
have to do it. We'll see. I have to like, read you so much time. How will you collect the final? Will, you, will we email the Excel file? No. The night of the final, you do the final here, and then you have to print it out in an office over here. Yeah. So we have to make sure they're there. And you got to have some kind of card or something to get that print that out. And then you give me it, and I take it home. What's going to be on the final, or what's the content going to be? All the stuff that we're doing and all the stuff we did. So if you understand how you did your homework, you won't have much trouble with most of the final, just the new stuff that we're doing now. Okay. Unfortunately, this is a computer course, and the only way we can do the final exam is on the computer. Yeah. The idea is to teach you how to use the computer. I'm just concerned because these computers have a lot of problems. Well, yeah. you have to find one that does. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. Oh, my word. Everybody get in Google Chat. Well, I, I'll offer you an alternative. You, if you can bring in your own computer, you can do it on your own computer. You don't have to use this computer. But you have to have a way of printing it out. You have to bring in your own printer as well. So <laughs> <laughs> what's happening here? Yeah, you can put in a flash drive. Just email. Yeah, a flash drive. Yeah. You can put out a flash drive and then put it in here. If the computer's not working, it's not going to work either. I'll leave that open. How many questions will there be? I have to make it To show you the direction of economic research in different ways, uh, especially in the macro area. Now, there is one tool that is done in all of economic research, whether you're a microeconomist, a behavioral economist, or a macroeconomist, and that's regression. I'm going to show you now how regression, where it comes from, and how we do it on the computer. It's the most important tool in all of economics, regression. Uh, on January 3rd, I got to go to San Diego for the annual meeting of the American Economic Association. There'll be several hundred sessions in that meeting. And in every single one of them, somebody will be presenting a paper with a regression. The only way to get anything published is to have some kind of regression in the paper. And it's all about that. Right? It's the main tool of economics. That's what we're going to study now. Yes, you should graduate if you don't know anything about regression. I'm sure most of you know. We'll get into it now in a little more serious way. The idea of linear regression, and there are many kinds of regression, but we're only going to talk about simple linear regression. <coughs> Treasury Department, whenever I get these emails, when they list what they want people to know, one of the first, one of the most important things is regression. Econometrics, which is regression. The whole, the whole course of econometrics is all about regression. So if we take the more general form of the coordinates of the x, y system. Form of a linear equation is y is equal to a 
plus B of A equals to where A is this distance. We're here to here. And B is gotten by taking two points on the line, following them down, and here we get delta X. This distance from here to here. Ordinary Taking it across. So we get delta Y. So B then. <coughs> delta Y. A is the y The most important application of this is the consumption function. The economic consumption for the C is equal to A plus C Y, where that's household consumption, GDP, disposable GDP. A represents intercept, B is the slope. But in economic terms, we call this autonomous consumption. amount of consumption you would have to have to stay alive even if you have no money. It's basically the food that you need to stay alive. And B is what we call the marginal propensity to That is the most basic, one of the most basic equations of economics. But there are many others. Uh, Microeconomists will construct a regression equation relating all kinds of different things, all different kinds of uh, uh, phenomena in the microeconomy world. Now, usually, the data come in columns like this. x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, and so on, x of n, y of n. And when you plot them, it, it dots like this. So the job of linear regression is to find the line is A and B that best represents the observed data. Now, one way we do it is call this A hat, B hat, the estimates. And these would be the observed data over here. <laughs> well, for example, this would be x1, y1. <laughs> and straight down here you get x1. And across here you get y1. So you think you're going to do 25 countries? In and this one over here would be x2, <laughs> y2. Y2. And straight down you guys can just pick up you and my 12 each. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, Those are the data coming in the column. So. Now the difference between the line and the actual data, let's call this point over here, x i y i, and the distance between the actual line and the point is an error term, so error i. The line does not go through the point, error i. So if we want to get the actual <coughs> yi, 